then uh, we want to see how we can follow up or probably to come up with an instrument or to know if there is any instrument that is uh, available to follow through on the various uh, uh, agreements that have been made among member states. Then the last one, uh, this is uh, particularly for the road to Mozambique. I think uh, they want to share, other countries to share their experiences on uh, mining issues regarding uh, the water quality. Active participation, uh, the need for us to be present in the processes, not just physically present, but also psychologically, intellectually, and emotionally present to follow the proceedings so that we take advantage of this tailor main uh, course. Uh, we have already written down because the, the, the group here says we at least know a lot about the, uh, the surface water, but we want to, uh, to, to get more information on the water issues. Uh, the other one is the uh, relationships and help from international laws, our certain instruments, and also personals. How do they uh, come together and help in the shared water software process? We have to international laws, certain laws, uh, we have basic laws, and maybe even a, a, a country laws. And how do they uh, have to come together to help the water to share water sources? Uh, on, 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 on basic and water sources, water sources, negotiations in our business. So in these experiences. Practical knowledge on um, international water laws. So that is, the, that is the first expectation that we had. And we also listed that we would like to gain practical knowledge and skills on how to resolve conflict. Um, by this, we basically mean um, strategies that would enable us, participants and the member states, um, that would enable us to engage and then also resolve um, the conflicts or issues that may arise. Um, number three, we also listed that we would like to keep the process of capacity building in international water law and negotiation alive. By basically, um, it should not just end here. So the people that are present here today should go back to their respective places and then also further train the people that they left behind. Um, guidelines, the first one that we have which was already mentioned, is that we should um, put cell phones on silent. And then we also stated that no answer is wrong and no question is stupid. So every point or every one's um, opinion is valid. And then basically, number three, which covers what I just mentioned now, is that we should respect um, every transboundary issues. And if there is any existing legal framework, we want to walk away with skills on conflict analysis, theory of the international law and what it covers. We also want to know how to prepare and avoid risk of conflict in transboundary areas arising from shared water. Also, we have a question which is, are there legal framework regarding developing the shared water resources on transboundary issues. Those are our expectations. The ground rules we came up with are minimal use of mobile phones, especially during sessions, mutual respect of every individual's opinion, and full participation from everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. The common ones, what's up? I see uh, we are ready or we are discussing, let us avoid getting to WhatsApp. Uh, let us see do that one at an opportune time. And see, the other one is see, uh, keeping time. If we say this session to be, be uh, one hour, it should be one hour. Yeah, if it's nice, it's two hours, it should be two hours. And the, the fourth one is coming specifically for me, not for the group. Uh, it's, it's a question. Uh, we're going to end up here with a visiting uh, any uh, place of uh, reporters will be ordering, will be aware, uh, 
Gurbi, grass, grass, do the same that, uh, that every sometimes you play in school, but uh, this gym very quickly. Yeah, so this one is coming for me. So. Uh, by sharing the expectations that you have in terms of the substance of the course, but also in terms of the process uh, that is going to be followed. I'm going to give this opportunity to my co facilitator so that they get ready to negotiate with each other. Um, my background is in conflict resolution. My doctorate is in conflict resolution. And uh, my master's is in peace and governance, as well as a master's in sociology. So I think it does help to understand the concept of water from a cooperation perspective, so, but also uh, from a not. At the University of Oxford, um, Oxford um, Department for International Development, uh, on the executive, no, not executive, uh, the M-Field Program in Development Studies, which is one of the flagship programs of uh, that department in Oxford University. Uh, very recently, I uh, spent two years at the Institute for Peace and Security Studies, IPSS, at Salva University, where I was in charge of the executive master's program in managing peace and security in Africa, the program she just mentioned. And that program is very unique in many ways, and I'm hoping that uh, we'll also be able to um, pitch that anyone that, of you that is interested in the formal extended master's program around peace and security issues might also consider that. Uh, before I took up responsibility for, for that master's program, I was yes. on the PhD program in Adan Institute. So it's a program that I'm really very, very proud of. Um, yes, I've been involved in teaching over a long period of time, but I also do, of course, research. I work around issues of natural resource governance, and I see water uh, as a uh, natural resource. Unfortunately, we always take that for granted. And I was just talking to her now that <coughs> water, in my view, uh, is going to be the next potent, if already not, potent source of conflict on the continent and around the world. And we can already see that happening in our different countries and in, in our different regions. And it's very gratifying to note that the Sadek region is perhaps the most advanced in terms of the management of water and the challenges arising from it. And I think that other parts of the continent need to learn a whole lot um, from, from the Sadek region. And in this regard, I was telling her that I would uh, have a conversation with the Executive Secretary of Waternet to see the possibility of actually scaling up this kind of engagement based on the long experiences you've had in, and the nexus between that and conflict, you know, across Africa. And it's a conversation that we can have uh, at some point during it. And I'm happy to also transmit that to my former institute in Addis Ababa to see the possibilities of collaboration, uh, including with the African Union. Uh, I believe strongly that the African Union is very far behind, uh, that there's so much that the African Union can learn from regions in terms of how they manage very critical issues. Uh, for instance, I come from West Africa. There's so much that the African Union can learn from ECOWAS in terms of managing peace and security issues. And I think that there's so much that the African Union can learn from SADC in terms of managing the nexus between water, negotiation, conflict, and so each other, and understand the need for them to work together. So I'm also, I also have an expectation from this workshop that one can begin to create that community of experienced professionals who come from different organizations within their respective countries uh, and who are drawn together to learn from each other. And I'm hoping that at the other end of the conveyor belt, intellectual conveyor belt, in five days' time, um, some of these expectations that you have the the to give you the warmest welcome uh, to Mozambique. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you, and uh, we'll be together today in our first sessions um, discussing international water law, uh, because uh, that's my field of work. I've been working in water law for some 10 years now, uh, as a professor of law and as a lawyer also, drafting legislation and uh, participating in trainings the internet, for example, and um, maybe uh, I'll not go through a lot 
to what uh, we will discuss today and uh, uh, of course what I expect is for you to, to, to transmit me uh, what's uh, your background and your expertise in this area so that maybe I can help you to better understand international law and we exchange views because um, and I'll speak uh, of the case of Mozambique in particular. Uh, we are facing um, a very big problem uh, nowadays relating to international water. Uh, because Mozambique is a downstream state and uh, almost all the water of Mozambique comes from uh, other countries. Goes through other countries first and then comes to Mozambique because we have the ocean uh, as a downstream state. And uh, although we have uh, 15 international rivers, Maputo is so basic, uh, as you can understand, we have a lot to discuss beginning by uh, trying to understand what is international law uh, relating to water resources, how it is uh, applied and uh, uh, how we, we use the law to fair and negotiate. So um, this is who I am and I hope that we will have a good time through uh, the day. Thank you. Well, what are negotiations, for example? Uh, I'm aware of the time that we were supposed to have gone for tea at uh, 10 o'clock. And uh, I would like to say that uh, please uh, accept our apologies for being the first ones to break the guidelines of necessary where we need to really pay more nuanced analysis and more detailed attention to what your brain will do so during the course of the five days. So uh, at this point in time, I would like to announce that we can go for tea. Well, so our team is uh, a river-based organization that has been formed by eight federal uh, states, uh, Angola, Botswana, Malawi, Mozambique, Namibia, Tanzania, uh, this river prison organization was basically formed to look at uh, the equitable and reasonable utilization of water resources in Mozambique for the benefit of the current states. And utilizing this uh, river basin, the issues of sustainability of the resource are key and are paramount. Uh, and that's why member states uh, would like to develop the river basin to ensure that there is that sustainability of the resource, of course, for future generations. Uh, it was uh, fully established in uh, 2015, and the headquarters are in Harare, Zimbabwe. Uh, the, the organization itself, I mean, the secretariat, is headed by the executive secretary and uh, supported by uh, seven other members the staff from the member countries. Uh, basically that is um, it's there to ensure that we have equitable and reasonable transition of our water resources. How ready to sample? This training is very, very paramount yeah. important in the sense that um, you see in, in ensuring that we have this equity in our in sharing of the resource, uh, you realize there's a number of issues that come up particularly in the development of resource. So the course is there to ensure that participants are given the necessary tools so that they can negotiate around water issues uh, uh, relating to the development of resource. And also it's, it's very key to ensure that there is that cooperative management of resource. Uh, as you know, where these proper negotiations uh, is bound to be reduced conflict ensuring that everyone has a share of resources. So it's a very, very important course. For Most of the participants are coming from the apparent states themselves, particularly the sections dealing with international waters. You know, most of the countries now have established sections that are dealing with international waters. So the idea was to make sure that the staff are coming from a responsible section, or should I say departments, that will be called upon in case of negotiations, uh, any issues that may come up in the case. So we, we actually invited the, the technical uh, 
personnel, mainly the directors, to make sure that they nominate staff that will use the course at the end of the day. But I'm not there's a base basis. Oh, thank you. It's always a pleasure to be in Maputo, in Mozambique, and especially when it comes to fulfilling Waternet uh, mandate of capacity building uh, for the Sadek region. And we are even more happy this time because this is a tailor-made course uh, dedicated to the Zambezi Water Course Commission. And it's a course that has been inspired or guided by a need identified within uh, the river basin uh, organization on area of international water law and also negotiation. As for WaterNet, our continuous professional development finds its relevance indeed when we are addressing some of the issues that would have been identified on the ground. And in this case, with the eight riparian countries of the Zambezi Basin, we hope that at the end of the day, they will be equipped as to help the Water Coast Commission to fulfill its mandate when it comes to implementing water resources development project within the river basin. And as WaterNet, we are always present to try and make sure that we accompany them in the process, and especially now that we want not only trainings that are theoretical in nature, but trainings that are helping solving actual problems on the ground. So for WaterNet, this is really an important uh, activity, and uh, we hope to continue to do so, not only for the Zambezi Water Coast Commission, but also for the other river basin organization in uh, the southern region. <laughs> we will be discussing uh, international water law yes. because um, to uh, better negotiate, we have to uh, have a good basis of uh, law, uh, in this case international law. So it's important for the participants to have an overview of how international law works um, what uh, its principles, what, which are the main rules applicable to this international law, uh, in order to make sure that uh, when they negotiate, they have legal basis to, to, to better offer their positions. So we are going to have an overview of uh, international water law, the general international water law. We'll discuss some of the SADC law and uh, see which treaties we have in the region um, in order for them to be aware of uh, what rules are applicable to the many situations we can have when we are discussing water issues. The course uh, on okay. uh, negotiation skills will be focusing on the skills on how to negotiate over transboundary water resources, including groundwater resources as well. The emphasis is really to expose participants to the rubric of conflict management approaches towards approaching water cooperation. And uh, it recognizes that negotiation is just one among the myriad of approaches. So we'll start by focusing on uh, conflict management as a whole, as a spectrum, to look at uh, conflict management from an arbitration perspective, adjudication, mediation, before we narrow down on the rationale and added value of negotiation. The emphasis on negotiation is because it gives the parties that are involved, the parent states, and the member states the power to engage in negotiation and to own the agenda. And also it empowers uh, individuals who are involved in the negotiation process without necessarily involving third parties. And uh, the course also underscores the important role of dialogue, uh, conversation, which is constructive towards ensuring that we resolve our differences uh, of our water issues in an amicable and amiable manner. Uh, the course will uh, comprise uh, of plenary presentations 
expert presentations as well as reflections from the participants themselves in terms of how negotiations have been conducted uh, over water in their respective countries, uh, in their respective basins, as well as uh, in the region as a whole. We are aiming to come up with some lessons learned, some best practices, and also to review some of the challenges and how we can approach um, the future going forward based on the lessons from the challenges. Thank you. Okay. Is that not correct? Yeah. What do you want? What do you want to do? I don't know how you do it. Is it not in Spanish? Mm -hmm. I think it's from Spanish scientists, which I think is... Uh, yeah. Just a follow-through on the when this kind of disaster happens, it causes a lot of, leaves a lot of damage. Thousands of people have been, you know, neighboring countries are providing assistance, you know, uh, in different forms, you know, to deal with all this. It happens like that, and then it causes so a very short period, and it causes so much damage. So even what even the water brings life, sometimes it can bring misery. Huh? It is true that water brings life. So also does it bring. Hmm? So I think uh, two important issues over the last uh, couple of days, and um, the discussion is long. And on this note, I think uh, we should have the two presentations. What we'll do is uh, we'll give. Uh, how many minutes should we give for each presentation? I'll pass back to that. Um, or well, those who contributed to it so that we will know. Just uh, for an example. Yes. How some began, that some began. There. The group one, we will talk about the negotiation in the context of uh, transborder water resource. We choose uh, the case of start Rivungu Shangongo Canal. Uh, the Rivungu Shangongo is a canal of uh, the western of Zambia and the <coughs> southeastern of Angola. This canal